and welcome back to the Glory and Praise Show on Off the Pulpit. I'm Andre Acha, and together with me is Beatrice de Cruz. Yep, and if you've just tuned in to Catholic SG Radio, well, Off the Pulpit is a program where members of our clergy come in to help discuss and share matters of faith with us. Mm. Now, in the course of our discussion on faith, we hope to also hear a personal perspective or maybe a sharing of their own faith journey on the topic that we are discussing. Now, dear sisters and brothers, I hope last week you managed to catch, or the week before, you managed to catch our part one of uh, off the pulpit in this particular series on prayer. Uh, this is part two of the edition, uh, and with us uh, we have Father Emmanuel. But uh, let's let me let me just uh, introduce you to what we've been talking about. I'll just give you an idea. I mean, you know, Lent, as we know, is a special season for us to improve our prayer lives, and in so doing, improve our relationship with the most important person, Jesus. Uh, we also mentioned last week that. Uh, you know, some of us actually get distracted during Lent. Instead of quietening down, uh, we get caught up in a lot of activities. Uh, I think the activity is not so bad. They are corporal and spiritual uh, acts of mercy. Um, but sometimes we get too busy. Mm. And I think we forget that we need to be still, mm. right? Psalm 46 uh, verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. Mm -hmm. And so before the Lord, maybe when we are still, we can deepen our relationship with Him. And that's, I think, what prayer during this time of Lent is really calling us to do. Uh, and so the best example, of course, we have is Jesus, who went off, you know, He went up on His own, uh, and He even got away from all the busyness of ministry to go and pray, mm -hmm. right? And we'll answer that question also a little yes, bit later, you will. You right? Will. So once again, Father, welcome back. Thank you. And thank you so much Good for, for joining yes. us. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to be, uh, you know, talking about some quite interesting things today. Uh, why don't you just start off, uh, uh, Beatrice? Yep. Okay. So thank you, Father, thank once you. again for sharing with us. So now we are in part two of this episode on prayer. Uh, Father, could you share with us, why do we say that Mass is the highest form of prayer? I mean, isn't Mass just some kind of uh, liturgy? Yeah, you know, people just see Mass as like, <laughs> a, yeah, some kind of um, activity that goes on mm. in the church, you know. Mm. But liturgy really mm. <clears throat> is an expression of what we, we, we believe, right? So, mm. Of course, we believe in the faith of the church. We believe it, that Jesus is our Lord. Mm. But how do we express that faith? Yeah. Like how do we express that? And it is during the Mass. So the liturgy is, is a means in which we demonstrate and we, we, we project uh, our, um, our belief um, in, in the faith of the church. Right. So during the Mass then, it's a classic example of how we praise God. We ask God for help. You know, and at the end of the day, just be part of that family, that heavenly family that goes on within the Mass. Mm. Right. And it's also a highest form of prayer because essentially the entire Mass is a prayer. Mm. I say it's a prayer, but of course, in reality, as we will, maybe we will go through the Mass, yes. some parts of the principal Mass correct, correct. section, it is a whole compendium of prayers. Mm. It's many sections of prayers. That's Just right. that sometimes, because especially for those of us who have really been going for Mass, we get so used to the proceeding of Mass, we don't think so much about it. Yeah. Mm. We yeah. just know what's going to happen next. We just respond accordingly. But actually, many segments, the principal parts are proper prayers. Yes. Mm. And therefore, if we understand it well, then you will then uh, appreciate the Mass as a form of prayer, and in fact, if not, if, if anything else, the highest form of prayer. Mm. So maybe we should talk a little bit yes. more about it, isn't it? And yeah. in fact, you know, and so when you when you we come for mass, right? Really, the first thing uh, to mm. start us off is the sign of the cross, mm. and we forget that a lot of what we do during the mass is actually very very biblical. Mm. You know, people have forgotten that as well. So even the signing. Uh, there is a reason why we have been signed or we sign ourselves with the cross. We're not going to tell you that today. Uh, <laughs> homework. <laughs> homework, homework. Okay. But so, so yes, Father, yeah. so let's go through these, these principal parts. Correct. So before I go through the principal parts, uh, maybe just a form of a reminder of what I 
define or help to define um, in part one of what mm, prayer is. Yes. Mm. Uh, bringing in um, uh, my favorite quotation from St. Teresa of Jesus, uh, come like foundress, is that prayer is nothing more than an intimate sharing between friends. Mm. How do friends share? We talk with each other. Right. right, There is a two-way thing. I talk to you, you talk to me. We listen to each other. There is a two-way conversation going on. And so it might come as a surprise to some of you, but during the Mass, it is really a two-way conversation with mm. God. What most of us might think it is, is like a one-man show up there. The priest <laughs> does all the things, you know, like yes. it's like a performance. Correct. And I just passively sit at the pew and wait for one hour to go. Correct. But actually, if we participate and understand and appreciate what goes on in the principal parts of the Mass, it's yeah. really a two-way thing. And so maybe we, let's talk about it now, yes. right? And as, at the very beginning, as you say, you know, as we sign ourselves with the cross, in fact, even before that, uh, with the sign of the cross, as the procession comes mm. in, uh, yeah. we already, you know, with That's our hymns right. that we are singing, what does St. Augustine say? Mm. Singing is twice. twice. You pray twice as much. Already in the singing, mm. yes. we are praying. So for all those of us who might feel a little bit awkward, we don't really you know, yeah. try to. Correct. Because just by participating in the hymns, mm. yeah. you're already praying. So you see, that's already a, a starting point. Even if you don't have the most beautiful voice, doesn't it doesn't matter. matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Correct. And you know Make a that, joyful sound unto the Lord. <laughs> as we say. Yes. You know? We should, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And I think many of our uh, choirs in the church, they're very mindful of the seasons. Indeed. And so during Lent, you will see that the, the, the music is a little bit more somber, That's right. you know, solemn. Correct. But or when contemplative you see Easter, you or see, reflective, you know, rather. Correct. Mm -hmm. So we are supposed to respond and, and accordingly, you mm -hmm. know, and we pray in various forms. Right. There are many forms. And just as we can pray in various forms, remember we are praying to God who actually is present. Mm -hmm. Remember, as I mentioned, it's an intimate uh, sharing between friends. That's and right. And we ask, but where? Where's the friend? I can't see. <laughs> uh, but yes. of course, the Lord is present in various forms within the Mass. Right. Mm. So even before we talk about conversation, be assured that our Lord is truly and well present in the Mass. He is present, of course, in Persona Christi, in the yes. form of the priest. That's yes. one thing. That's one. He's definitely present in the liturgy of the Eucharist. That's right. That's without a doubt. That's yeah. our firm belief as, as Catholics, mm. right? He's present in the precious blood and in the bread. And in, in, especially in the also in the liturgy of the word, when Absolutely. God speaks, He's there. Yes. So the presence of God is not to be doubted. Mm. Now it's how do we, uh, knowing that He is present, how do we make this conversation? How do we respond, right? In how that do we sense? make it alive? Yeah. And not that He's, you know, yes, we can't see it with our physical eyes, but in the eyes of faith, He is definitely right. yeah. there. Yeah. So how do we make it work? It is a two-way thing and that's the and the Lord is truly present. And so as I mentioned, you know, starting with the hymn, you're already praying, praising God. In part one of our of our program, mm -hmm. right? I, uh, I I did mention that uh, in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, yes. right. there are various categories of prayer. Mm. So in our uh, opening hymn, for example, typically it is a prayer of praise, you know, yes. thanking God, mm. glory to God in the, you know, we're yes. praising God, thank yep. you God for all this, you see. And as we, of course, go down uh, the Mass, you will see that once the, the hymn is over, you know, and we have said the penitential rites and all that, what does the priest say? Let us pray. Mm. Mm. Let us pray. Right. The priest never say, let me pray. <laughs> and that is why it's called the collective. Collect. Yeah. Or the collect, rather. Collect. The collect. Correct. So, mm. already that kind of word sometimes just flies over our head. Mm. Because yes. we're so it's used true. to the mask, right? Now. Correct. We don't think too much about yeah. it. Mm. But really, the priest is inviting everybody to pray. Yes, it is the priest who mouths the prayer. Yeah. But it is representative of the people. Right. So, mm. all of us our prayers are part of it. And that's why he said, let us pray. Mm. Already we are involved. Definitely very much. Or we much. are invited to be involved. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Much, true. much so. So it's not just, you know, and how often do we even take note of what is being prayed? Yeah. Yeah. So I know many churches, they make an effort to project it on their that's screens. That's correct. If, yes. if you have in your parishes, it all depends. You know, I, I think if I may safely say, majority of the people don't let it 
sink in. You know, the yes. words, uh, you know, they're just words. Yeah. It's like all the priest is just saying something. Yeah. I'm just waiting to sit down. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> I've stood too long yeah. now already. <laughs> so perhaps, you know, uh, dear brothers and sisters out there listening or watching us, you know, perhaps uh, make an effort yeah. from now on. What mm. is that collect all about? What is the priest actually praying? He is praying for, to, for the fruitfulness of this Mass, actually, mm. if you right. think about it. You know, right. in this uh, Mass, in these sacraments, you know, accept our offerings, you know, make, uh, we, we, at the end of this Mass, may our, we, we, we receive the fruits of your Spirit, that kind right. of thing. That kind of thing, you know, accept our prayers, you know, as we are collecting and getting ourselves ready to, to move into the Mass mm. proper with the Liturgy of the Word mm. and right. the Eucharist. And yeah, yeah. actually, the, the beautiful part of the introduction of the Mass, I find, is also, you know, where we call to mind, uh, you know, our sins, we, we, we look at our lives and we reflect on, you know, we've, we've not done so well maybe over the week. Yeah. And so yeah. we ask the Lord already uh, together. Correct. Right? Uh, Andre, you're right. You know, so I jumped the gun a little bit. If we, if we move back, to the penitential, right? It is a prayer. Yeah. yeah. You know? I confess to Almighty I'm sorry, you know? Yeah. My fault. Yeah. The contrition. Yeah. It is a prayer. And again, we mouth it out so... Yeah. Methodically, you know, yeah, robotically. Exactly. Robotically, more you know? like it, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We don't think so much about Even it. Even through my fault, no more, is there, uh, <laughs> you know? <it's> yeah, all... <laughs> exactly. So, these are moments for us to um, renew our participation in Mass mm. in understanding that actually there's a lot of meaningful parts that we have yes. come to look warm towards it mm. yeah. because we're just too familiar perhaps. Mm. Or some people right. have to just totally forgotten about it. Perhaps. It's the simple yeah. things. Like the, you know, we, I mean, of course, mm. I grew up, it was still Mia Kupa, Mia Kupa, <laughs> Mia Maxima ku, yeah. uh, Kupa. Mm. But, you know, now to understand that yes. and with the translation that we have today, Correct. It's, it's so beautiful it actually. It is beautiful. Yes. You know? And it's now also available in our vernacular, That's in the right. language that we understand. And yes. yet, unfortunately, we have not let the meaning sink in, mm. yes. even though it's a language that we should mm. easily understand. Correct. And it? the act yeah. of striking our breasts, it does say strike your breasts three times. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Right? It, it is actually these little things that keep you in touch with what is actually going on. And okay, sometimes yeah, you're just doing it. But after a while, eh? You realize if it's not this week that you're gonna re maybe down yeah. the road yeah. you will. So just talking a little bit on that is some of our bodily reactions or actions like all this standing, kneeling, and all that mm. is forms part of the prayer also and, and the worship, way. right? Yes, yeah. you know. For example, you I mean you can't be saying I'm praying with your hands folded up and don't look at <laughs> God and then you say I'm praying. <laughs> so there are stunts, you know, there are yes. certain uh, appropriate actions that, right. that accompany the words Correct. that uh, make the prayerfulness it's of the posture, prayer environment isn't it? exactly mm. that uh, enhances the entire prayer experience. Mm. So why we kneel and why we stand, uh, we won't go into it of course today, but generally yeah. speaking, we have to be mindful that they are uh, why we stand at certain points and why we do certain actions uh, are so as to bring so as to bring the, the experience of prayer in an appropriate manner, mm. meaningful. Yes. More importantly. Mm. Correct. And then when we understand it, then the whole mass experience is not just yeah. Uh, uh, Calisthenics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something that unfolds, you know, robotically yeah, every correct, week. Yeah. Correct, correct. Yeah, mm. but speaking of the actions, Father, um, there are certain parts of the Mass where um, the prayers and, and gestures are for the priest only. Yes. So could you share a little bit more with us on what those uh, gestures might be? Yeah, some parts of the Mass where there are prayers reserved uh, for the priest mm. is simply because at that very moment, you know, um, the priest must remember that he still works in the person of Christ. He's not Christ. Right. Mm. So at some point, you know, uh, it is uh, a reminder for the priest that I am now uh, the mediator, so to speak, mm. between the people and God. Right. And so there are some prayers and actions that help the priest to uh, prepare himself um, um, to be worthy to to celebrate certain parts of the Mass. For, for mm. example, maybe yes. an example would be helpful, you yes. know, before we go into the liturgy of the Eucharist, mm. where the priest has the privilege of invoking the Holy Spirit to, you know, do the transubstantiation of, right. the, of the thing. 
um, we need to prepare ourselves, yeah. right? Mm. So that symbolic washing of our hands That's and asking right. Lord, uh, you know, wash away my iniquities because I need to be worthy enough to hold you later on, Absolutely. for example. So there are some private prayers which are reserved only for the priest because the priest must remember at certain parts, at principal parts of the mass, he needs to humble himself, he needs to be worthy and that the Lord will look kindly on the sinfulness of the priest mm. to still be worthy to to, to uh, um, celebrate the Mass That's right. in the right manner. Actually, mm. alre- that already happens also uh, just before the Gospel. That's right. So actually, again, before yes. the Gospel, I had to say a prayer, you know? Yes. Cleanse my heart and my lips, so Lord, that I may worthily proclaim That's right. your Gospel. Correct. So there's, but the, the, the people don't, don't know hear that, that. Don't yeah. hear that, but... I need to say that we all, the priests need to say that so that to remind ourselves at the end of the day, right, I'm speaking Jesus' words. Yeah. Make sure my lips and my heart is worthy enough to mouth the words that our Lord himself uttered. Absolutely. And that's something that we we as priests need to be mindful. Mm. So there are, uh, to answer your questions, uh, Beatrice, is that yes, um, there are some parts of the uh, Mass and uh, prayers which are especially reserved um, for the priests uh, for various reasons. Uh, mm. main, main deal, but that's yeah. beautiful. I mean, yeah. you, you know, I mean, being a priest uh, or before you became a priest, right? And when you did become one, did it, how much did it uh, affect you in, the, in that sense? You know, this mindfulness of, of saying those prayers. The mindfulness really um, was that time when it hit me that I would be really holding the Lord in my in my hands, you know, at the part of the consecration. Correct. That suddenly I have this, um, I have to use the word ability or, or yes. power. I mean, given to me, of course, by the grace of God, but through ordination, through ordination I'm given this privilege. Yes. Mm. And am I ready to do it? And so th- there are many prayers that come before that, that now I'm very mindful that say, my, my goodness, I better say it well yeah. because I'm going to do really a miracle that God is working through me. Absolutely. You see? And later on, also before we say, Behold the Lamb of God, that's a beautiful prayer, you know, asking the Lord to ask the, so it's a prayer, the prayer of the priest asking, say, Lord, you know, with all my sinfulness through your death and resurrection, help me to remain faithful to you. Help me not to sin because I am really going to be handling your body and blood. Literally, you know, yes. physically, carnally, whatever you want to yeah, call it. Yeah, exactly. In its totality. Mm. Yeah. So wow, that's for, an impact. For all that, you know, knowing that I'm touching the Lord with my bare fingers have made me uh, very conscious about the press yeah. and also very conscious about going for the sacrament of reconciliation mm. as often as I can, really. Wow. Sometimes it, it hits me when I feel that I really should not, I don't feel that my fingers are clean enough to mm. behold the Lamb of God, you know, I just feel that I'm not and y- there. You know, actually, that the mindfulness, and I don't know whether you realise it, but the mindfulness of the priest in his prayers before or during the consecration and during the, the Mass itself actually has an effect on the people who, of course, those who are mindful and, and, mm. and are watching. Because it's really, really very uh, edifying also for us mm. uh, as lay people I mean, okay, this is a little bit off the topic, but it is still very edifying for us to see the priest, you know, praying those prayers and the posture, as you said, yeah, it is important. the articulation of those words. And even though you, some sometimes some say it just barely enough for you to hear because of the microphone, mm. uh, but in the old days, generally, you know, they were yeah. facing, mm. but it is so beautiful. So. It is a liturgy also, f- I mean, for the priest as a demonstration of his faith, mm. yeah. you know, and the, and the kind of, uh, um, the manner in which we exhibit this liturgical faith for the people, it sets it's the a, tone. Exactly. It sets the tone for the people. And then when you are, when we are reverent, the people will re- will reciprocate in that, in that manner as well. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay, sorry, Father. I jumped the gun. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, but like, uh, well, going back to how you know the mass is truly a prayer and a two-way thing, yeah. and the next segment, of course, is the liturgy of the word. Mm. Yeah. And we always complain, God, I talk to you, you never talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? Why are you not speaking to me? Well, the liturgy of the word is the place God is speaking to us, Correct. isn't it? Correct. Right. Yes. The question is whether we are even listening or not, or we are True. commenting. Are you this lector read so badly? Uh-huh. You know, sometimes we're not. 
really <laughs> listening to the words. We are we are distracted as we talk about yeah, distraction, yes. isn't it? Correct. God speaks to us, of course, in the two uh, first two. I mean, all the three readings, of course. Yes. Uh, more so in the gospel, but uh, it's God's words all the way, yes. isn't it? The question right now is, if it's a two-way thing, then how do we respond? Since when God is speaking, we are listening, now what do we do? Right. So there are two, in a way, two responses on our part. Number one would be at the end of what has God has said, we respond. Mm. The word of the Lord, thanks, thanks be to God. God. Yeah. We must reply. Yes. We must reply. Mm. Don't whisper it. Thank you, God. You've yeah. spoken to me. And then comes the next part, which is the sacred silence. And many mm. churches are practicing now, you know, there's a little bit of a quiet time before yes. we start the next segment. Right. This is not the opportunity for the open doors so that the late comers come yeah. in now. <laughs> <laughs> it is the time for sacred silence. Now is the time that God spoke to me. Yeah. What did he say? What's my response? I know it's not a lot of time, yeah. but it is an opportunity mm. to respond. Again, it is not yeah. an opportunity to take a breath mm. or to relax It's a, a pregnant bit. silence, eh? Correct. in a sense. Yeah, yeah. And it's not a practical one for practical things to be done. Yes. It is a sacred silence yeah. in which it is an opportunity for us to respond. If it's a two-way thing, that is your point of response. That, okay, Lord, thank you. I got your message. For example, you know, mm. I understand now. I was going through this, but I think, wow, your first reading today... I yeah. understand. Something like that. Spot on, mm. yes. It's a bit of a moment where we must uh, take that opportunity to respond and not see it like, uh, oh, we need, because the lector must come down for the next one to go up, you know. Correct. Those are helpful moments of uh, uh, pauses in the mass, but that is not the key. Yeah. That's why it's called sacred silence. I That's think many right. churches actually put the words up as mm. sacred yes. silence. Then we have the responsorial psalm. And as the name responsorial <laughs> says Oh, it? not responsible psalm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I heard that so often. Oh, gosh, hilarious. Yeah. Responsorial. Yeah. Respond. Yeah. Respond. We're supposed Correct. to respond, right? Yeah. So again, it's a two-way thing. You have to respond, mm. you see? And of course, um, when you come back to the gospel, it's the height of it all, exactly. you know? Remember Hebrews chapter 1. Right in various times, in various ways, in times past, God spoke to us through various means. Right, yeah. prophets, you know, blah blah blah, in dreams, clouds, uh, thunder. But now God speaks to us through His Son. Absolutely. So if you say Jesus is not talking to you, He is talking to you right now in the gospel. Yeah, exactly. And more so, uh, in the homily, mm. you know, yeah. uh, through the breaking of the word. Absolutely. So, God is speaking to us. Yeah. He is very much present. And he's tugging us in our heart as he's speaking to us. The question is, again, how we respond. Sadly, most times the hum our human nature takes over at that point in time. And then we begin to judge whether the homeless <laughs> is good or whether it's the, the homely is short or too long. Mm. You know? <laughs> or yeah. I hope it's not happening now. <laughs> when I was growing up, you know, people, some take this time to go out to small oh or read, read Kelly. <laughs> I don't think it's happening now. I hope not. Yeah, but I, I, I've seen that. I've seen I know, that. I know. I've you seen know, that I've before. Seen that. Correct, yeah. correct. But yeah, I mean, so I mean, sadly, as I said, we let our humanness take over. Mm. When actually, no matter what it is, the priest is still in persona Christi. In persona Christi. Right? And yeah. what's and not flaws and all. Exactly, you know? <laughs> and And in faith... We should we should we be do. listening. Correct. Yeah. But it's tough, I suppose. It's, it's tough. So but again, hopefully through our little discussion and program yes. here, you know. Yeah. Um we might encourage our lay faithful to just let them, you know heighten yeah. that awareness a bit mm. more. And it's also ramp up the reverence a little correct, bit. Correct, correct. No, it's our pride also, so nice. Isn't it true? Yeah. yeah isn't yeah. it true? We, yeah. we, we let that get pride. in the way. We all have pride. Yeah. <laughs> And the next segment, of course, with the you know the creed and the universal prayer, yeah. as the name suggests, the universal prayer or prayer of the faithful. faithful. That's right. We are praying again. Actually, I like that the prayer of the faithful because then it makes it more personal. It makes it more our mm. prayer. In and that I think sense. many churches now craft their own. Yes. Mm. Although there is a certain sure, there's always formula. guidelines. Yes. There are some yeah. guidelines. Yep. You know, you always have to pray for the universal church That's from right. the macro to the micro. That's yes. right. And I think many churches are very mindful of that, or maybe all churches are very yes. mindful of that. And Correct. I thought it's been uh, uh, amazing and creative in the way they are praying on what's really happening now in the world. Indeed. Mm. 
mm. right? With the natural disaster that happens, yes. you know, um, yeah. wars or st- uh, civil strife and all that. We are praying Correct. and it's alive. So it's not a dead kind of prayer of the faithful. Exactly. It's dynamic. Mm. It's updated, yep. you know, and, and it's relevant. So, it, so again, you see, we are praying. Who says the mass is just liturgy or, you know, yeah. One hour obligation. We are praying. Yes. So for that, no, you know, uh, seriously, for any of you out there who is not praying the entire week, <laughs> just coming for this one hour of mass, uh, you Absolutely. are doing the best prayer of your life. Just participate fully for this one hour, right. and you are you are doing the best prayer that could ever mm. uh, be. So don't shy away from a come back to the masses because this is the place where you are. 100% involved physically, yeah. spiritually, very much involved. Correct, you know? correct. Yeah. Well, the sisters and brothers, thank you for joining us. If you just joined us, welcome to Off the Pulpit. Today we're speaking to Carmelite Father Emmanuel Noel, and he is formation director at the Carmelite uh, Formation House in Pongol. And we have been discussing the Mass, the highest form of worship, and we also discussed the uh, how we should participate in the liturgy of the Mass. So now let's continue. Father, basically, if we look at the Mass, right, mm. um, everyone is supposed to be praying. Of course. Uh, <laughs> and it's a way of leading to the point where, you know, everyone is should be looking in the direction of heaven, so to speak. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so how is the Mass seen as the liturgy of the revelations that we uh, in you know in the book of revelations we read about the heavenly liturgy uh, and how does so how does that lead us to to what this heavenly liturgy that first and book foremost, of revelations yes, mentions yes of course yes okay so i will address that I will, let me lead up lead my answers up to okay. that okay first of course if you notice huh, almost all our if not all our catholic churches have statues, right, of saints, yes. Yes. right? Yes. We all, I, I can't think of a church in Singapore that does not have a single statue or maybe Ooh, at nah. least like, huh, mm. there should be one sure. or two. For sure. You yeah. know, for sure, isn't uh, it? Our blessed mother is right and, 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 yes. and, 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 and like, why, right? Some people, you know, yeah. uh, we, we have uh, people who question, you know, like, why does your Catholic church have mm-hmm. all this, you know, your focus should only be on God. You know, all these saints distract you, you know. All of them are, you're going to touch all the toes until the toes are disappearing, isn't it? Right? Yeah, it's like, why are we having yeah, all yeah, this? Yeah. You know, Jesus is your main focus. But they're not wrong, by the way. No, that no. That argument is absolutely, absolutely correct. Yes. But the point is, we still have it. Correct. And why? Yeah. Because at every Mass, we believe that it is not just a celebration of those you and I who are still living on earth. Yeah. But it is that very moment where heaven and earth, no pun in that, no, no, no song lyrics, uh, heaven and earth collide. You know, we are really mm. together. Yes. We are really together, just that we don't see the heavenly beings, right. but because these statues are there to help us in that remembrance, in the mood, if you like, yeah. that they are with us. Actually, when we sing the Sanctus, yes. Holy, 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 right? Exactly. When we sing the Agnus Dei, the, the, the Lamb right, of, of God, God, all of that mm. is already prefigurement exactly. of this uh, heavenly liturgy. Mm-hmm. Correct. So, well, that's why it's also the highest form of prayer because during the Mass, this is the only prayer that you can experience where heaven and all the heavenly beings, the saints, the angels yes. are truly also present with us in adoring God. Right. You may not have that in your home, right? For example, you know, or at least we, you can't guarantee that. Right. So to speak. Correct. But in the in that whole process of the mass, the invocation of the saints yes. and the Holy Spirit, yep. that entire one hour, you're guaranteed to be in communion with the, the beings in heaven, Absolutely. Ad- adoring God. Yeah. Mm. And therefore, that's why it's the highest form of prayer. Right. You know, when you have your own quiet time to pray to St. Michael, maybe only St. Michael is there. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. Right, but I'm telling you now, yeah. St. Michael and then some, hey, exactly. one of them, they're there. Exactly. And it's amazing. So we don't realize that. Yeah. You mm. see? And therefore, uh, again, you know, if you have you don't really have time to pray the entire week, you feel that you've always forgotten about God, then mm. the bare minimum yeah. is to come to church. Yeah. Because that is the really, I mean, if you think about it, it's the most powerful prayer mm. that that uh, yeah. you know we we can ever be part of. Mm. 
and, and to be very honest, uh, the lay faithful, even though it is a two-way thing, you're not really doing a lot. Half the time, the priest is saying blah, 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 correct, blah, blah, correct, blah, correct. and you only just say, Amen. amen. That's right, that's right. Oh, thanks be to God. <laughs> thanks uh. be to God. <laughs> but even that Amen, Andre, yes. that Amen is so important, you it know, is. because yeah. you assent, you agree. Correct. You fully say yes to what the, the priest is saying on your behalf. Are you most of the time, I mean, uh, Correct. You, you can't even hear the sometimes. The whole Eucharistic <laughs> prayer one, the Roman canon, oh, we can oh, go, yes, yes. and the last part, we all, yeah. and, and the people just say, Amen. And yet, it's also difficult. That's you know? right. But really, yeah, it's a beautiful thing that uh, to be, just to be there, you are part and parcel of the heavenly being. And that leads us, because at the end of the day, we all know that is our goal. Yes. Heavenly go, and every time you go for mass, you are getting the experience of being part of that heavenly experience. Mm. The thing is, again, with our physical eyes, we mm. don't see. So often, oftentimes, or maybe even always, we fail to realize the true presence of our Lord, and with all the the wonders of the heavenly realm, mm. right. very much intricately with us. Mm. You see? Now that you've brought to mind, um, Father, about the presence of heavenly beings as we pray, yeah. so why do the heavenly be beings <laughs> sorry, still have to pray? Correct, what right? do they have to do with our prayers? Yeah. Or what it's, do they do with our prayers? Isn't it an yeah. interesting question, right? Yeah. Because yeah. You, firstly, you will think, many of us think, huh? yeah. if I really make it to heaven, I've made it. Yes. <laughs> no need <laughs> anymore. <laughs> No, I keep right. praying, I keep doing all this is because I want to reach the heavenly God. I mean, good lah. Huh? I want to see Jesus' face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I reach to heaven, I just have a heavenly banquet, eat and eat and eat <laughs> and see Jesus' face. Why are they still praying? Yeah. You know, seriously. Okay, let's let's unpack this, okay? <laughs> Real question. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But these saints, uh, don't forget, uh, at the end of the day, yeah, they are still alive. So long we are all uh, members of the, the God's family. We are all the late faithful. Whether we are alive or dead, we, are, um, we all belong to Christ. And of course, right. for the heavenly beings, they have eternal life mm. simply because they believe in God. So the point is they are alive. Yes. Okay? They are alive. But um, when you reach to heaven, what we need to change our mindset is that we are not going to just lay up. Yeah. <laughs> and do nothing. The right. day we reach to heaven and the book of Revelations gives us many uh, insights to That's what right. is happening right. is that you are non-stop so happy in the presence of God you can't help but praise Him, love Him, uh, talk to Him and help those who are not there yet mm. to come up to Him. Right. So for example, uh, okay, Revelations uh, 5, uh, 8. Revelations chapter 5, verse 8. This is one very interesting scene, you know, where um, John of Patmos ah, yes. see the vision. That's right. right. And he saw the 24 elders. That's you right. Know, and, many, and then they were like sitting on the throne. But as they sit on the throne, they will stand up and then they will, they will worship right. the God. Yes. And then they will sit down. And so there was one homily I will say, you know, uh, does this sound very tiring to you? <laughs> right? For the rest of your life, huh, mm. you're supposed to be getting up, bowing down, kneeling down, standing up. Do you feel tired? And we all say, yeah, it's just far, very tiring, you know? <laughs> the question is, we find it tiring because we have not aligned our lives to what it is to be in heaven. Mm. So our whole mindset of what heaven ought to be is warped. Yeah. Mm. So much so that we think that what they are doing yeah. sounds very tiring, isn't it? Because well, we, we're still thinking with our, our, our human minds. Correct. Here, right? Yeah. But for when you are in heaven, this praising and loving God and adoring Him, there is no tiredness. Right. Doing that brings life. And you will also see here in the same chapter, in the same verse, uh, Revelations 5, 8, that as the elders are... Worshipping God, kneeling, prostrating. They are also, you know, each one of them have this golden lamb, golden That's bowl, right. and they are bringing the prayers up the to incense God. The incense and the smoke and all of so that. So we ask, yeah. you know, I pray to this saint, uh, I pray to St. Teresa, you know, I, I, I pray to, uh, you know, all these saints. Hey, what they do in my prayer? Uh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, what they do with their prayer is that really, they, they, they bring it up to the Lord for us, Absolutely. you know. For example, you will see uh, all this in Revelations uh, chapter four, verse ten. For example, mm -hmm. 
In chapter 4, verse 10, you see the elders doing that. Chapter uh, 6, verse 9, um, even um, Revelations chapter 8, mm. verse 3. Um, the angel will stand at the altar with some golden censer, you know. That's right. So, in order to bring the prayers of the faithful up to God. To God so, yes. they actually act as our intermediaries. They mm. actually do, uh, uh, on our behalf, mm. bring our prayers to God and intercede for us. So, it's not that they have made it and therefore no need to do anymore, but right. they are really working very hard mm. yes. for more people and all of us to go to up. Be a part so of when God. we pray to Our Lady, yeah. also, who knows her son better than the mother, Absolutely. right? And she's very happy to to stand, um, you know, a, a, as a mediator mm. right. for us. So these saints in heaven are not not they are not really just loafing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and when we reach heaven one day, um, we will be so blessed in the presence of God that prostrating before Him may not even be enough. We want to do much more. Mm. Yeah. We want to do much more. And so the, the saints in heaven, they do that. And right now, um, we are asked to be saints too, uh, by the way. Yeah. Mm. We are asked to also pray for people. Yes. We are also asked to intercede for people. Absolutely. And do you know we need to? It's not just the saint's job. Right. It is your job and my job too. And I'm going to give you some biblical uh, evidence wow, yeah. on why we need to pray. So for example, in the Old Testament, we have from Genesis chapter 20, verse 7, God said to Abimelech, mm. you know, Abimelech, he says, if you want me to help you, you ask Abraham to intercede for you. So you see, God say, uh, you know, I'm going to hear, I'm going to help you based on intercession. Abraham is a good prophet and if he intercedes for you, I will help you. Genesis 27, Job, in the book of Job, you know, when Job went through some yes, difficult, difficult time, times, yes. friends or to choke, right? Not, Correct, you know, yes, ah, say yes. all these type of things. So God Correct. was very angry with them, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so God actually want to whack them also. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But in Job uh, chapter 42, verse 8, you know, so God says to all these naughty friends, he say, if you don't want me, Right, to, to be angry with you, ask Job, my faithful servant, yeah. to pray on your behalf. So, Job was supposed to help save their lives by interceding for them. Mm. In the New Testament, you will see that St. Paul asks in his letter many times, of Saint, pray for me. Yes. Mm. I need your help. Yeah. So, for example, St. Paul letter to the Romans, you know, chapter 15, Romans 15 to 33, 0, he says, my brothers, I exalt you Pray for me in your prayers that in my struggles with the people of, you know, Judea, for example, right. you know, uh, all these issues might be overcome. I need you to pray for me. Right. And maybe one last example will be uh, one of the classics of St. James, you know. Confess your sins to one another and pray for one, for another. one another. So it's biblically written, mm -hmm. you know, as evidence that we too need to pray for each other. Not just everything, lump it up to the saints. We need to pray. Correct, correct. And if I may, very quickly, just share this quick anecdote with you, with our Carmelite nuns, you know. Um, a number of years ago, when I was a seminarian, um, Cardinal uh, William, um, then Archbishop Steele, of course, he celebrated um, this anniversary mass of one of our Carmelite sisters right. uh, in uh, Bukit Perme. I think it was a 25th um, silver anniversary. Right. And in his homily, he said something which I never forgot and I've always been using this in as, as an example to many people who ask about the efficacy of prayer. Mm. His eminence, or well, his grace then, said this in his homily, I never forgot. He says, today we celebrate, you know, the sisters, of course, this sister who said, I, sorry, I can't remember the name of him, but nonetheless, the spirit of the Carmelite sisters, they are all living in cloister behind the grills. They are praying for the people, for all of us, for the world. But these women will be considered crazy women if they didn't believe in the power of prayer. Why would they want to dedicate their entire lives, shutting themselves out from the world to pray if they didn't think that prayer would be of any use? Right. Mm -hmm. If they didn't think that their intercession and their lifting up of prayer would help each and every one of us, 
Why would they do it? They would just be a bunch of crazy women. When I heard that, it was so strong because, mm. you know, his grace or his eminence now was very clear in saying that the power of prayer is more, is unimaginable. Yeah. Don't underestimate the power of prayer. It's Correct. beyond boundaries. It transcends all rest, all obstacles. And therefore, it is our job. Not only just to keep only pray for myself. Huh? Yeah. We need to pray for others. And when we go to the church and we go for mass, we are praying for others. Prayers of the faithful is a classic example Absolutely. of praying for others. Yeah. And the Lord's prayer, which is the prayer the Lord has taught us, our Lord has taught us, you know, is in the mass. Absolutely. And we need to be there for mass each week, at least once, once a week, to pray for our souls and to pray for many others. Mm. Father, which leads me to this Last question, I think. <laughs> why did Jesus pray? And Jesus prayed many did, times. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Or why did times. he need have yeah. need to pray? Yeah. And that again brings back to the beauty of who Jesus is. Jesus is both man and God. So during those times when he was on earth, he was, uh, he, I shouldn't say he was, uh, because he is still man and God mm -hmm, today. Mm -hmm. But that was clearly more manifest yes. during that 30 over years when he walked on earth, right? His uh, humanity was manifest clearly then. Now Correct. we wait for his second coming. But Absolutely. The point is, because our Lord took on human flesh, he also understood the limitations of what it is to be in flesh mm. on earth. That is why our Lord can never be at two places at one time. Remember right. that, right? Yes. Never was he at two places at one time. Yeah. Never was he able to... to jump from one village to the other village in a, in, mm. in, in a flick of a hand. Correct. And he sent out 72 in order to help him, That's right. you see. So he too, in his humanness at that point of time, more so, of course, the divine is always there. We mm. must be very, never forget that he's always 100% on both, be, uh, both nature. Exactly. But as a human nature, at that very moment when, you know, remember... Um, St. Paul letters to the Philippians when he was for a moment, you know, humbled himself and mm -hmm. brought himself lower than the angels. That's right. In his experience as man, he understood, he fully uh, knows our limitations and our dependence on God the Father. Mm -hmm. And so in his humility as man, as taking on flesh, knew that in many things, whatever he's going to do next must always be in accord with his father. Right. He could easily be Yaya Papaya, right? I'm right. God, right? I'm yeah. son of God, right? I can yeah. do whatever I want, but he's not going to do that. He wants to ensure that everything he do, even the choosing of his 12 apostles, he prayed before mm -hmm. that. Yes. Many times he goes off quietly because he just needs to have conference with daddy. Yeah. And this whole prayerfulness, this whole persona shows that Jesus, who is God, it's not a God who is delinked from us. Mm. It's a God who understands our humanness and knows that through prayer, asking the Lord to guide the way for me to surrender yeah. is the way to go. It's, mm. the, it's why even though I am son of God, I am still obedient to my Father. I am one with Him. And right. only in prayer, when I have that relationship and, 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 and conversation with my Father, that we always do things on the same page. Right. And that's why he not only did he demonstrate the need for himself to pray, he also teaches, te taught us or te is still teaching us how to pray. How to pray. Mm. So prayer is not reserved only for mm. you know, the lowly people or those in trouble. The right. Lord himself showed us how to pray. And um, therefore, um, nobody should be exempt. Exactly. If God himself did not exempt himself, mm. right, there's nobody, none of us should say, I don't need to pray, right? And certainly he didn't own self pray own self. Huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. Exactly. Remember, although they are Trinity, they are all exactly. one God, they are three pers individual divine persons that make up one Godhead. Correct. So nonetheless, the Son is still the Son, the Father is still the Father. So he's not own self pray own self. Huh? He's yeah. praying to the Father. Correct, correct. <laughs> Which, I mean, is such a great reminder, you know, that, uh, I mean, if the Lord had to pray, yes. then, you know, who are we? Yes, sisters and brothers, you know. Correct. Um, and, and you know, I think also this posture of prayer is a posture of humility when we, when we realize that we can't do things alone and that when we need help, 
you know, we need somebody else to help us along the you way. You know, the paintings and pictures of, that shows our Lord praying, he's always kneeling. Did you realize that? Yeah. You never see Jesus standing up, folding his arms, talking to the Father. He's mm. always in the kneeling position. That's right, that's right. So I think that is a great example for us, you know, how... And I, I think for those of us who, 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 who know the difference, when you kneel and pray versus sit and pray versus stand and pray... Mm. So I think you feel the difference. Don't you? Indeed, absolutely. I think you feel the difference when you somehow go on your knees and you yeah. pray. Especially if you're before the Blessed Sacrament. There's a mm. great difference. Somehow uh, there's a great difference. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Wow. There's a lot more we can talk about, but indeed, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> Just I was looking at time, Father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so, thank you so much, Father, for sharing thank with you, us. Thank you, and so, Andre. Yeah. Yes. So if you're listening right now, off the pulpit uh, goes out every fortnight on Tuesday mornings at eight thirty a.m. But if you're not able to catch this, or you want to share this with someone, oh, uh, catch yes. us on the on call broadcast that is at eight p.m. tonight. Uh, also, we're out on Wednesdays at five p.m. and Thursdays at two ten p.m. Uh, we also have podcasts available for you. Mm-hmm. So you can just go to our Catholic SG Radio app or Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Uh, that one you can listen to it. Suka Suka la. <laughs> <laughs> Our own time, own target. OT, OT. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, well, once again, we thank uh, Father Emmanuel. Thank you. Father is, of course, uh, from the Order of Carmelites, Discalced OCD, and he is Formation Director at the Carmelite Formation House in Pongo, the St. John of the Cross community. Thank you, Father, Always so much. Always a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you for your honour. Always. And thank a, you. a blessed Lent. As well as we prepare to both of you and to all of you out there, for thank sure. You, yeah. Thank you, thank yeah. you. And so, dear sisters and brothers, hopefully, uh, you, you have you take this opportunity. Um, you know, Easter is very, very close by. We we are you know looking towards uh, the resurrection and the joy of it all. So, thank you so much for joining us here on Catholic SG Radio. I'm Andrea. Cha. She's Beatrice de Cruz. Thanks so much for joining us. God bless you all. See Bye. You.